Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's MinMD Real Talk webinar, Injection Therapy Online Clinic. My name is Austin Hunt, and I'll be your moderator for this event. I work on the marketing team here at MinMD, and I'm excited to be hosting this session today. Before we get started, we have a short disclaimer that we need to review. The health and medical information provided during this webinar, as well as the questions and responses from the webinar providers, are solely for informational purposes. This content is not intended to take the place of advice or treatment from health professionals. Nothing presented in the webinar is intended to be used for medical evaluation, diagnosis, or treatment. It is not intended to substitute for your relationships with your own healthcare and pharmaceutical providers. Always seek the advice of your healthcare provider before beginning any new treatment or if you have questions regarding a medical condition. All right, with that being noted, I'm pleased to introduce today's presenter, Dr. Justin Howman. Dr. Howman is a fellowship trained male reproductive medicine and surgery specialist. His focus is on men's health, including male hormone management, sexual and ejaculatory dysfunction, male fertility, male incontinence, and Crohn's disease, and is located in Los Angeles, California. Today is going to cover injection medication, syringe and dosing, injection techniques, support options, provide a brief demo, and then hold a live Q&A to close out the webinar. So without any further ado, I'd like to kick things off by welcoming our presenter, Dr. Howman. Over to you. Um, and briefly here, I, I just to introduce myself, I thank you everyone for taking your time um, out of your evenings to listen to this. And hopefully everyone learned something. Um, but briefly, as, um, as Austin mentioned, uh, um, I did my, my residency at Cedar sinai Medical Center, then I went to UCLA for my fellowship specializing in men's health, sexual reproduction, uh, medicine and surgery. Uh, so I see everything in terms of testosterone management, um, erectile dysfunction, sexual dysfunction, infertility, incontinence. Uh, but a huge component of my practice is obviously sexual dysfunction. So um, that's what we'll dive into today. And um, we'll just jump right into the erectile. Um, before we go into the injectable therapies, we'll talk about what an erection is and what um, what you need. Excuse me, what you need in order to have an erection. So, the erection process really it's 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 four parts. Um, the first one being the first part is you have you have nerves. Um, if anyone um, is familiar with a prostatectomy, for example, the nerves that we're talking about are the ones that ride along the prostate. So these are the nerves that could potentially be injured during any type of prostate procedure, whether it's uh, for prostate cancer, or radiation. So those nerves, what they do is they send a signal to the vessels, the arteries of the penis, and they essentially induce them to dilate. And on that dilation, blood flows into the penis. Um, so it, as it says here, number two, muscles around the arteries relax, more blood flows into the penis. As, as the blood flows into the penis, the penis becomes rigid. It becomes rigid and erect. And then it's not just blood flow into the penis. It's the veins outside of it, as you can see here on, in, in the blue um, on this cut drawing here, those, that, those areas have to compress so, so it doesn't let the blood out. Essentially, the blood has to keep coming in, preventing blood flow out, and that gives you that uh, rock hard, strong erection. So, this is the normal physiologic erection. Now, many things obviously could go wrong here in terms of uh, the erectile process, um, things such as the nerve, you know, not having good nerves due to some kind of therapy, uh, poor um, blood flow into the penis uh, in terms of the ar arterial blood flow, or then also, there's issues with venous leak where the blood isn't able to stay there, it comes out rather than uh, staying in. So um, there's tri different treatment options available for all, for all of this. Um, one of the more common ones and more efficacious ones is obviously intracavernosal injection therapy. So um, if no one is familiar with uh, uh, intracavernosal in injection therapy, we'll go over it here, where um, essentially what it is is uh, Vasoactive drugs are injected directly into the two erectile bodies of the penis, creating that vascular arterial dilation and ultimately uh, blood flow coming into the penis with the hopes of giving you a good, strong erection. Now, um, there's different injection formulas. Um, it's, it's the common, the common um, mixtures are one of two or three components. So essentially, the three main common ones are alprostadil, also known as prostaglandin, the pavarin, as well as pentolamine, and these all work in different ways um, to increase blood flow to the into the penis and prevent um, arterial blood flow, essentially the arteries from constricting, just creating good dilation of that arterial supply into the penis. Now, when when you have all three, excuse me, when you have all three components in it, it's called a trimix. When you have two of the three, it's called bimix. And every once in a while, 
some patients will only be on one component. However, obviously that's um, much less often. Bimix and the trimix are uh, more commonly used than efficacious. So the medication concentrations, as I mentioned, bimix and trimix. So um, really the, the beauty of, of these formulations are there's not just different concentrations, but different dosing. So some way, somehow we'll find you a, uh, a good regimen to be on. It may take a little bit of time to find it. And most patients, um, you know, starting at a low dose of trimix helps, or, I mean, essentially it helps them uh, achieve good erections. However, for those that don't, we can increase the concentration, we could increase the volume. Sometimes the trimix isn't so, um, they experience a little bit of pain with the trimix, so we could put you on the bimix, um, that way reducing any side effects, but also maintaining good strong erections as a result of it. So that pain that I'm talking about, it's mostly the alprostadil component, as you can see here on the bottom left of the screen. Um, it could cause an aching sensation about one in five guys. Um, so if that's the case, we'll put you on, excuse me, we'll put you on bimix, and in doing so, we could, uh, maintain good efficacy while also minimizing that side effect of, of penile pain. So when it comes to, um, obviously, you know, th th there's a taboo associated with injecting yourself or injecting your penis, obviously with a needle, but the good thing to know is that the needles that we use are um, insulin syringes. So they're tiny, they're very, very small. The gauge of the tip of the needle is incredibly small, it's increasingly small, and it does a good job in terms of uh, getting that liquid in there, getting that uh, those vasoactive components within the penis, while also uh, minimizing the pain. So, the, um, as I mentioned, there, the uh, vasoactive substances are injected directly into one of the erectile bodies. The two erectile bodies are connected, so if you inject in one, it, sh it will diffuse into the other side. And um, it has, you know, the needle has everything on it in terms of the information, so you can see how much, um, you know, you know exactly what volume you're giving once we find that good, uh, medication, whether it's a trimix or a bimix, and also finding a good volume for you. So um, uh, it's very simple, it's very straightforward. And here on the bottom right, when it comes to the dosing, this is also important to know. So sometimes we'll say 30 units, 50 units, 100 units. So the, the needle, and I'll go over this a little bit later, the needle or the syringe, it's one milliliter or one cc. So when we say 30 units, we're saying 0.3 cc's. When we're saying 50 units, we're saying 0.5 cc's. Um, that's just another way of uh, memorizing it, making sure that uh, you're giving yourself the right dosage. So um, the starting dose, obviously we start you off at the starting dose. Why? Because uh, one of the risks associated with um, intracavernosal injection therapy is not just pain from um, some of the uh, vasoactive components that we give you, but more importantly, uh, what could potentially happen is something called priapism where um, you're maintaining an erection longer than four hours. And that could create problems in terms of um, oxygenating uh, your erectile bodies and your tissue. The, the penis, like any other organ, needs oxygen. So if you're depriving it from oxygen with that continuous blood flow, um, what could potentially happen is long-term damage to the penis. So um, the re so we set the, the starting dose. We start you off at a, at a reasonable low dose. And we tell you to slowly increase, increase your, uh, yourself up uh, by five units, sometimes 10 units, but essentially slowly increase so you're not, uh, so you minimize your chance of having a, a priapism event, again, having long-term side effects. Um, so full erection comes down in a reasonable period of time, ideally less than four hours. Um, and then every once in a while, if you do have that uh, the priapism event, what we could do is give you a reversal medication. There's some oral therapies we could recommend at home, but a lot of times patients would have to go, or sometimes, Patients have to go to the emergency room if it is lasting uh, longer than four hours. Um, and then more importantly, this is the most you know, thing that uh, I always try to preach is don't use this more than every other day. Um, using it daily, obviously, is going to increase because it does have some lingering effects in the penis. So if you give 20 units today and 20 units tomorrow, the 20 units from today could potentially a little bit of residual effect in the penis. So it's going to uh, have, have a, a stronger effect yesterday, excuse me, a stronger effect tomorrow which could potentially increase the risk of priapism. Uh, so what do you do to prepare for the, uh, for the um, injection? Um, so really, it's, it's very basic. You need three things. You need a medication vial, you need the syringe, and you need alcohol pads, right? Essentially, these are the three things that you need. So what you do is, um, 
you, in order to draw up the syringe, and I'll show you how to do this, but as we mentioned, uh, your physician will tell you um, what dosage and what the number of units that you're going to use. So if it's 20 units, 25 units, 30 units, generally you start you off at about 20 units, depending on bimix or trimix. And then uh, what you do is you remove the cap, you expose the needle, pull the plunger back to the indicated dose, fill the syringe with the air. Then what you do is you inject the needle into the plunger, up, into the vial, it's upside down. Um, and then um, you, you inject the air into that vial. And then what you do is you slowly pull back to that same dosage, 20, 30, 20, 25, 30 units, whatever it may be. And, and at the end, you really want to tap in in order to get the, the, the blood out, excuse me, the air bubbles out, because you don't want to be injecting um, air bubbles into the penis. If you do small bubbles, it's okay. We're talking about large volume of air. You don't want to inject it into the penis. Um, not that it would have significant, it could have potential um, issues as a result of that. So obviously we want, we want to minimize that. Uh, so when it comes to the injection, remember, um, the key thing here are the landmarks of the penis. So this is a cross-section cut. You're looking directly at the penis. So at the top of the penis um, is, we call this the neurovascular bundle. So that's where the blood flow, um, as well as the nerves uh, for the penis run, uh, mud, the blood flow to the skin. And then at the bottom is the urethra, right? So we don't want to inject it into either one of those areas. So you really have anywhere from 12 to six is fair game. We usually just because of, um, ergonomics, we say, um, you know, anywhere be, uh, between one and three o'clock or nine and 11 o'clock are the best areas to inject because it really gives you that open area on both sides. If you can see here, um, really just to inject, you want to go a 90 degree angle, number one, and more importantly, you want to really hub the needle by that. I mean, you really want to put the whole needle, uh, you want to bury the needle in the skin. That way you're getting it into the erectile body. A lot of times patients will just get the tip in. And that's just getting into the subcutaneous fat of the penis. So I've had patients who have done it into that subcutaneous fat, and they're like, look, I see a bulge, but I'm not getting an erection. Reason being is you, once you, if you're getting into the fat, that's not going to do anything. You really have to get into those erectile bodies. That's the key. And then slowly, slowly inject, right? Slowly inject into the area. Ideally, you switch sides. One, if you do it, if you're doing it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, on Monday, you inject on the left, Wednesday on the right, Friday on the left, back and forth, back and forth. And then um, in terms of minimizing the side effects, um, as, as we talked about, using proper injection techniques is the, is the best way. Um, just listen to, um, at least initially, uh, the, the, your instructions, whether it's, uh, if you, whatever urologist you see mentions this to you, make sure you're following that first dose appropriately. Um, rotate the injection sites, as I mentioned, uh, one and three and nine and 11, left, right, left, right. And then, um, Use no more than once every 24 hours or once every other day. Again, because the more you use it, the more likely you are to have um, some kind of priapism event as a result of this. And then finally, uh, you do want to keep you do want to keep these vials refrigerated. Not so much frozen, but refrigerated as it maintains, you know, it just it is, as long as it's staying in a steady state of, of a cool temperature, uh, the vasoactive components are potent and they stay in their potent state in order to provide good efficacy when you do inject it ultimately. Um, and the biomix and trimix uh, multivalues are safe up to 28 days, and that's the key there, 28 days. So um, ideally, uh, you go through a whole vial every 28 days um, if you can, and then um, basically re-up every 28 days because that could lose its potency as a result of uh, prolonged uh, um, staying in, you know, not using it uh, very often. So in terms of the injection accessories, so, um, and this really... So, so uh, you know, MedMen has tried to make this, make this as easy as possible for everybody. So some guys are averse to needles. So there's the auto injector here on the bottom left. Um, some people are, are have an issue in terms of drawing it up. So the, there's the insulase in the top right there. Um, in terms of carrying, let's say you are going on a vacation, let's say you're going out of town. Um, the insul tote does give you a little pack, uh, package in order to keep everything safe there. And then finally, a sharps container. Once you use these products, just throw it to the sharps container and then you could dispose of it appropriately rather than putting these in the, the trash can. Um, it, these are biohazard products, so they are uh, disposed of appropriately. If you need more, you know, more questions or you have more information on this, MedMD Med is one of the leaders in the, in the country 
when it comes to intracavernous injection therapy. So that if um, you have any questions about the side effects, treatment efficacy, dosing, or even how to do it, feel free to reach out. Here's some information from them, their website, their phone number, uh, and they have support staff that can answer all the questions uh, that you do have. Here's my information. As I mentioned, my name is Justin Human. I work out, I work at, um, uh, here in Los Angeles, California, right outside the Cedar sinai Medical Center. Um, there's my, if you take a picture of this QR code, that could, um, it'll save my information. Feel free to reach out with any questions. Um, as I mentioned, I do men's health, um, sexual dysfunction, male fertility as well. Here's my address and my Instagram and Twitter if you guys are interested. And then uh, we'll jump into the Q&A here. I'll do a demonstration, right, Austin? That's right. I was just about to tell you. So if you stop sharing your screen, we'll go into the demo portion with the uh, full screen on the webcam. So um, yeah, I have a, a sample here. So I'll show you. And as I mentioned, you just need three things, right? What you need is number one, you need the um, the syringe, you know, syringe in the needle. It's an insulin syringe. One cc. Essentially, it's a graduated marking with one cc. As you can see here, it has the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 units. You need the your the intracavernosal product, whether it's uh, bimix or trimix, you'll have that. This is usually refrigerated, so you take it out of the refrigerator. And you need alcohol swabs um, with. I don't actually have the alcohol swabs on me. I apologize. But what you do is it, it's very basic. What you do is you, um, let's say I need 20 units of bimix. So what I'll do is, as I mentioned, you lift up. You pull the syringe back to that 20 unit mark, right? You'll use the alcohol swab to swab the, the bottle. Once you inject, you squeeze the air back into it. And then what you do is you draw up, you slowly pull back to 20, right? Sometimes you have to leave the plunger at 20 for it to fill, for the whole syringe to fill. But once it does, you're able to pull back, you leave that down. I mean, I have a handy dandy here, uh, penis here. <coughs> Excuse me. And the key is, the key is when you're doing this is, ideally you wanna do it at the base, right? Whether it's the left or the right. And as we talked about, one in three, nine and 11, right? Those are the key areas at the base of the penis. And what you do is you put the penis on stretch, obviously not that kind of stretch, but just enough stretch. And what you, what you do is you inject directly into the base. And what I would do is if you do it on the right today, a couple of days from now, you could do it on the left. And slowly, what you do is you just, Hub the needle. The key is hubbing the needle. You want you don't want the needle hanging out too far out because it gets into that uh, not into the erectile body. So once you hub the needle, you slowly inject and you pull back. And a couple other things about this is so if you're laying down, if you're laying down when you inject or you have somebody else injecting for you, um, that's fine. Obviously, that's fine. But the best in order to really have a good response to this, you want to stand up. And you want to self-stimulate before you're getting that erection because just standing up creates enough gravity puts enough pressure on the venous system of the penis to create that that venous collapse and that venous obstruction to allow for good arterial blood flow while preventing it from coming out so do stand up do self-stimulate otherwise you may not get a great response if you're laying down the whole time um and then you know you could hold the after you inject hold the penis for um you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds, just to make sure um, you're not getting any bleeding. And the, the other thing is make sure you're avoiding the veins. You'll see some guys have a lot of veins on their penis, some guys not so much, but either way, they're very obvious on the skin. So just do try to avoid it. It's easy to avoid, um, but if you get it directly into the vein, you may get a little bit of bleeding, just compression for about 30 seconds should do the job. Um, yeah, so that's the process, um, very straightforward. Um, some tips that patients, well, this is a handy trick that one of the patients, one of my patients taught me a few years ago. Um, what they do is they know that they're taking 20 units a day, right? Or 20 units each time they want to have an erection. So at the beginning of every week, or for them, it was every two weeks, what they would do is like on Sunday night, they go in their refrigerator, they take, they knew that they planned on having sex five times that in those two weeks. So what he did is he took five of these drew up 20 units in each of them and put these syringes in his refrigerator, right? So then when he wanted to have <clears throat> intercourse, all he did was he would just go into the refrigerator, he capped the, 
after after he drew up the syringes, he tapped them, put them in the refrigerator so it stays refrigerated. When he was ready to go, he pulled it out, put the penis on stretch, alcohol swabbed the side, and inject himself, and he was ready to go. So that was that's a nice trick that you could do as well. Um, so rather, so you're not always drawing up. But even if you are drawing up, as you could tell, the straightforward process, very simple. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not too difficult to do. All right, uh, so if we're done with the demo portion, we can go ahead and uh, get into the Q&A portion of the event. Um, so I got a question here from someone that's kind of similar to uh, what you were just talking about. Um, they say, I have seven years experience using Trimix. My process is to fill multiple syringes with the appropriate units. I then freeze them for use later. I thaw and use as needed. What are the risks of freezing them? Yeah, um, so freezing them, that's a good question. It's a very common question. So freezing them, um, well, freezing them, as you can imagine. So as I mentioned, you want to keep it in that steady state. So if it's in the refrigerated cool state, um, the vasoactive components aren't, um, are staying essentially at their same level. So efficacy and side effects are minimized uh, when they are remain stable. Like anything else, the chemicals, you want to keep them stable. When you do freeze them and thaw them, that whole freeze-thaw cycle, could potentially decrease the efficacy. So when we say 28 days, there's a reason why, because um, there's been some science, some science to support the fact that after 28 days, um, it does lose its efficacy, number one, um, even if you do freeze it, because that it's uh, it's either it loses efficacy as a result of 28 days or that freeze-thaw cycle throws off the chemicals in that steady state, and again, um, could decrease the efficacy. So if you do want to have good, strong efficacy and you want to maintain um, a... Uh, a regular response to that same dosage and same volume, do try to maintain them and refer keep them refrigerated for no more than 28 days. Is there medication that does not have to be refrigerated? Is there medication that doesn't have to be refrigerated? Is that the question? Yeah, I'm guessing he's talking about injection medication that doesn't need to be refrigerated. Yeah, so there's something called EDEX. EDEX. Um, what EDEX is, it's a um, so for guys who want to go traveling, they could use it. It's not. Um, a, it's only one component of of. It only has one vasoactive component in it, so um, it's not as efficacious. But um, for guys who are traveling, yeah, that is something they could use. Um, but again, because you're, it doesn't have. It's not trimix. It's not as powerful, or it's not as strong. Um, some guys don't, or a lot of guys don't like using it, but there is. E-D-E-X is the name. All right, next question here. I get an aggressive burning sensation after injection. It persists for two hours, and I get swelling and blisters at the rim of my penis for three days. Is this an allergic reaction? Uh, if you said you were just getting pain with the injection, I would say maybe we could take out the alprostadil component. Um, but if you get the blisters on the skin, even though you're injecting in, into the erectile body, potentially, potentially, uh, that may be an allergic reaction. Um, what I would do is, number one, I stop using it now. I talk to whoever prescribed it to you, um, whichever doctor that was, and see see what they can do for you. Uh, because um, if they can't, feel free to reach out to me. Obviously, I could provide some kind of uh, advice as well. But um, that does sound like an allergic reaction. The blistering, you shouldn't get blistering with these. Uh, so that does make me think this may be an allergic reaction, yes. All right, I have had several occasions where I would develop a, an edema from the injection. What is causing this and should I be concerned? An edema. Um, depends where the edema is. Um, if the edema is on that skin level, my thought would be that you're not injecting it far enough. You're just getting it right into that. Rather than hubbing it all the way, you're kind of just getting the tip in. Um, if that's the type of edema you're talking about, if you feel if you're getting full on edema of the, the like the superficial skin of the penis, that may be an allergic reaction. Um, but edema with this, you should um, I'd, I'd give the same advice. Um, talk to whoever is the one that prescribed it to you to see. Um, uh, if they have any um, advice or if they could actually see what you're talking about in terms of imaging. 
All right. Uh, sometimes when I take the injection, it has no effect. Why? Yeah, good question. Um, that's a very common question. So, um, number one, it could be because um, you're not injecting it correctly. So there's a number of things that could cause this. Obviously, you know, poor injection technique. Not to say that you are obviously, but I would tell you across the, if you just in order to break it down to troubleshoot this, um, it's not being injected appropriately. Number one. Number two, you're not standing up. As I mentioned, you got to stand up and self-stimulate. That could potentially help. Number three, the the constant the dosage is off in terms of the the concentration of the vasoactive substances. And number four, you don't have enough volume. So there's different things. Now, um, if the technique is right and you're standing up and you're doing all those things correctly, the next thing I would say is, hey, maybe you're just not getting the right dose, especially if you've been using the, the same dose for uh, for years. If you've been using it for a while, your body uh, uh, sometimes you just need to increase the dose. So um, that could be me. What's going on? What is the average time my penis should stay hard using injection therapy? Um, it's a good question. So um, I, I tell patients that um, it should at last for at least one ejaculation, at least one. Otherwise, if you're not ejaculating from it, what's the point of using it? Um, if, if it's lasting longer than that and you know, you're able to go for round two and you have no problem doing that, great. Um, but uh, the reasons to be concerned, if it's, a, there's two reasons to be concerned. Number one, it's not lasting long enough for, to allow for one ejaculation, or it's lasting longer than four hours where you compromise in that, you know, the uh, oxygenation to the penile tissue. So, um, otherwise there's a lot of normal in between those two areas. Um, but there's no, there's no tried and true saying, Hey, listen, it's supposed to last 30 minutes, one hour, two hours. And your biology is different than mine, which is different than the guy next, next to you. So, um, uh there's no you know just make sure it's it's not it's lasting long enough but not too long those are the two things to to be aware of all right is it possible to have multiple orgasms with injection therapy definitely definitely like you can have like i said if you go for round two great great some guys are able to do that and that's that's wonderful but if it's if it's again the direction is lasting way longer after round two after the second ejaculation then hey listen maybe we should uh, lower the dose or find a, a different concentration for you all right how long do you wait after the shot for best results yeah so about five minutes within five to ten minutes you should have some kind of result um if you're not if you're not getting that result with standing up and self-stimulation then um, at about 10, if you're not getting it at about 10 to 15 minutes, I'd say, Hey, listen, maybe we should talk, maybe we should alter the dose. Maybe we should find, fine tune it, maybe give you a little bit more. Um, but within five minutes, five to 10 minutes, you should have some kind of response. But again, if it's not happening at 15, um, talk to whoever prescribed it to you. How do you have spontaneous sex using injection therapy? Yeah, um, so that's, um, there's things that we could do to, to, to make it a little bit more comfortable for you. So the refrigeration technique that I talked about, drawing up 10, you know, five, 10 vials, whatever it is, um, and leaving it in your refrigerator. And then what you could do is even before intercourse, even before foreplay, before foreplay, inject yourself, then you could engage in foreplay. Um, obviously it's, it's not perfect. It's not like uh, a spontaneous erection, but um, if it does, if, if that's doing the things before foreplay or trying to inject yourself before foreplay could help. Um, that's probably the best advice I could give you in terms of, uh, uh, patient experience in terms of what, the, what they have told me. So inject yourself before and then engage in, in whatever it is. And that should maintain some spontaneity to it. All right. Next question here. Is there a risk to using a penis ring in addition to injection therapy? Um, if you're using a penis ring, um, you know, when you, when you ask that question, my, my thought is that the, uh, the injection therapy is not doing enough. Hence you're using, using the penis ring. Um, I'd be careful. I, what I would do is I'd stick to one. The penis ring could have a lot of side effects. Um, number one, it could cause, um, um, uh, 
one thing is, and I've seen this is it's more with the hard penis rings, the not the rubber ones, but I've seen it where it, uh, they get such a strong erection after uh, they put the penis ring off. Put penis after they put the penis ring on, they get such a strong erection. They, I mean, they've come into the ER and we've, we've had to use a Dremel, a uh, Dremel to take to cut that ring off. Some guy put a uh, metal uh, uh, penis ring on, and we had to use a Dremel. And if we put a tongue depressor between the the, the cock ring and his pe and his penis in order to protect it, we have to use a Dremel to take it off. So I would say no. The answer is no. Uh, you optimize yourself from a, an injection standpoint. Increase the dosage. Increase the concentrate. Uh, increase the volume, rather than putting on a penis ring. Don't do that. All right. Good tip there. Uh, can I use this therapy if I have glaucoma? Um, it depends what kind of glaucoma, um, but uh, it should be safe. So, here, so um, to answer your question, yes, you should be able to. The reason being is this doesn't go systemically. Um, it stays within the penis. Um, unlike the oral um, Viagra's and the Cialis, those act all over, primarily the penis. Those have some side effects. Um, but when it comes to the injection therapy, you should be able to use this fine. Um, with with uh, if if you have glaucoma, if you start to experience any side effects, uh, number one, tell the person who prescribed you this, and also seek consultation from your ophthalmologist. All right, next question here. I've used both Trimix and Bimix. After a year of use, neither seems to be working anymore, and I have increased potency. Why? Interesting. Um. And you, so I'm assuming your erections got better because of the, he says neither seems to be working, but what? Yeah, so he said that he increased the potency, but neither seems to be working. Oh, oh, increased potency, gotcha. Um, couple reasons. So number one, um, like we talked about, the what you need to know, the, the, the erectile process, those four things. So um as you age as like anything else as you know as you age the kidneys kind of give out the heart gives out the lungs give out the penis is no different in terms of it's not going to work the same way it did when we were 18 right and so part of that has to do with just the natural aging process of the penis the the smooth muscles aren't as elastic blood's not coming in the same way it used to we have issues like uh, cholesterol diabetes high blood pressure that decrease the caliper of those arteries that provide blood flow to the penis um that's one explanation for it. The second being, when you in, when you inject, when you inject into the penis, uh, into that the erectile area, one thing to be no, to to be mindful of is um, you're, you're introducing um, something into a space that's not used to it. So it does cause some inflammation. And the more you do it, and different guys obviously have different responses to this, but the more you inject, the more often you can inject, that area could develop enough inflammation where it becomes fibrotic. So that tissue that's supposed to be expanse out and fill with blood and, you know, to mess with blood, get nice and strong, with more inflammation, that becomes scarred down. So it's not able to expand the same way. It's not able to allow enough blood flow in. So over time, you may get penile fibrosis from these injections. Um, and as a result of that, you're going to have de decreased response or poorer response to it. So um, it's not uncommon to e keep increasing the dose. You've tried Bimix, you've tried Trimix. There's something called quad mix that you could try as well um, uh, that could potentially help. But if not, um, you'd have to go to the next stage of erectile uh, treatments, which uh, potentially is a penile prosthesis. All right. Uh, next question here. I can achieve an erection, no problem, but I do not climax. Why? Uh, good question. So what do you need for an erection? And what do you need for climax, uh, for an orgasm? What you need is hormones and you need good penile stretch. So sometimes guys will come in, um, they don't have a rigid hard erection. So think of it as, uh, you know, the guitar strings. If you're, if those strings are loose, you're not going to make a good sound uh, when you strum those, those strings. So you got to make sure those things are taut, taut, right? Those strings are taut, really tight. So what does that mean? Same thing for the erections. If your erections are poor, if you have like a you know 70%, 80% erection, it take your threshold for firing is a lot higher, right? For firing in order to have an orgasm, it's a lot higher. You have to create much, much more friction. Versus if you're getting if you have a 95, 90, 95%, 100% uh, erection, you know, that threshold to fire for an orgasm is much, much lower. So 
Uh, one thing it could be is you need to optimize um, the injection therapy or optimize and improve your erect erections to make them stronger. Um, otherwise, the, you know, uh, a blood hormone panel is important because uh, sometimes there's a hormonal basis to this um, and that requires a simple blood test. So I would, if that's an issue, I would seek medical consultation, absolutely. Great. Since I started using gabapentin, Trimix does not seem to be working. Is there a correlation? Hmm. Not that I know of. If you do equate the two, hmm, what I would do is maybe stop the gabapentin and see how you do. Um, unless you really need the gabapentin, I don't know what you need. I mean, uh, what, what the indication is for you. Um, I would, you know, potentially stop the gabapentin. If not, um, obviously different people, their, their biology, they interact in different ways. Um, yeah, I'd say, um, or you could, what you could do is maintain the gabapentin and increase the dosage of a trimix, but, um, not that I know of in terms of gabapentin and trimix, not that I know of. All right. Next question. I've heard a lot about the four hour erection being bad, but is an erection lasting two to three hours? Okay. Yes. Erection lasting two or three hours. Okay. I will say, if, as long as you're not having pain, if you start to have, if your erection is lasting two to three hours and you're having significant pain, uh, that's that may be an issue because pain is a sign that the penis isn't getting enough blood flow. So um, that's the one thing. I would, so it's not, everybody's not clearly four hours. Four hours is a really good benchmark for, for most guys. But uh, if you're having it consistently at three hours and you're consistently having a significant amount of pain, um, that could potentially be an issue. All right. Uh, can the vacuum pump be used in addition to injection therapy? If so, what's the process for this? Yeah, so the vacuum pump is actually great in the sense that I like to use it for patients. I like to tell patients to use it because what it does, and MenMD has one, a mechanical one. So I usually recommend the mechanical one just because number one, it's cheaper. And number two, it's, it's you have much more control over it than the electric one. Um, so I like it because it provides that pe that stretch to the penis. So those smooth muscles that we talked about are important for, for penile, uh, for the erection process. It helps stretch them out. So if guys are using, doing it for 10, 15 minutes every day, every other day, that getting that engorgement, getting that full erection and bringing it down, getting that full erection, it, it, in some ways it's, uh, it's like a form of penile exercise. So it does stretch the penis, number one. Number two, it could potentially decrease um, the chance of fibrosis or the effects of fibrosis because even if that area becomes a little fibrotic, by stretching it out, you're still maintaining that uh, elastic, expansile property of the erectile tissue. So uh, it could mitigate the risks associated with persistent um, injections into the venous. Therefore, um, uh, it couldn't you know, allow you to use uh, injection therapy a lot longer. So yeah, yeah, I'm a proponent of it for sure. All right, can injection therapy be combined with oral medicine like Viagra? It could. It could, um, but the injection therapy alone is strong enough to, uh, to you know, to do its own thing. You don't need Viagra. Um, um, I mean, I know patients who do this, and they feel like they're using a smaller concentration of the injection therapy when they're using the Viagra, which is fine. But um, you know, obviously, Vi Viagra has side effects associated with it as well. Um, you know, in terms of the runny nose, stuffy head, that kind of stuff. Oh, excuse me, stuffy nose, um, headaches. But um, if you are, if you are having those side, if, if you if you really want to use the Viagra with the injections, that's fine. But I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd say just stick to to stick to one, which is generally the injections. Okay. Next question here. I have variable results with Vimex injections. Sometimes nothing happens. Sometimes it works too well. Am I injecting wrong, or is it the medication? Good question. Um, if you're doing the same thing each time, if you're injecting at that one to three, nine to 11, um, you're injecting, hubbing the knee all the way, you're standing up, you're self-stimulating. Uh, if you're doing all those things, if you're maintaining that entire technique, if you're maintaining that consistency and you're having variable results, um, the other, uh, you know, it may be the substance itself. If you're refrigerating it, if you're freezing it, if you're thawing it, that could also, um, alter the, uh, the chemical activity and the strength and the potency of it. Um, 
but you know you, everyone's going to have a little bit of variation um, just because you know, stress hormones you know uh, in terms of stress hormones your testosterone levels vary um, if it's that drastic of an effect if it's that drastic I talk to whoever is prescribing this to you because what we could do is um, we could find you a better steady dose we may have to tinker the dosage just enough in order to give you that uh, minimize that volatility or that difference uh, but it is normal to have some variation there's no question about it you will have some variation it's not going to be the perfect same erection each and every time okay what is the treatment of premature ejaculation due to trauma resulted in hypersensitivity any rule for injection alcohol injection alcohol um yep yep that's what he's asking here um so if you're having premature premature ejaculation due to trauma um that's a little bit less common usually you have uh, delayed ejaculation due to trauma but if you are that just means those nerves are hypersensitized um there's things we can do to for premature ejaculation independent of the of, of these injections um uh, there's things that we could do in terms of uh, creams, oral therapies, that type of stuff. Um, in terms of injection of alcohol, I think if you mean injecting the nerve to decrease the sensitivity, I would avoid that initially. That'd be a last line. I'd, I'd stick to some of the more conservative, less invasive versions, such as the creams and the oral therapies before we jump into that. Yeah, that's what I'd say. All right. Uh... When is injection right for me? Pills are not working as they once did. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, I tell patients, I promise you some way, somehow, you will have a good, strong erection. It all depends on how aggressive you want to be in terms of your treatment. So if you think of the treatment period uh, pyramid, at the bottom of the pyramid is the oral therapies, the middle of the pyramid is the injection therapies, at the top of the pyramid is the, penile prosthesis. So um, obviously you want to exhaust all options at the bottom and then work your way up before you get more invasive. So um, if you've done everything on the oral therapies, you've increased the concentration, you've taken it more, com increased the dosage of the medication, you've taken it more, more often, and you're still feeling like you're not getting a good, satisfying erection, then it does make sense to, to, to uh, move up, go, go up to the higher levels, um, or go up the pyramid, work uh, you know, in, the, in the next phase, and find a good uh, treatment option for uh, your ED. All right, uh, next question here. I'm on injection therapy now. Do I have to use this for the rest of my life or will my erectile function return? So it depends. It depends why you're on injection therapy. So some guys, they're on injection therapy immediately after a prostatectomy. Now, uh, prostatectomy, those nerves that stimulate blood vessel dilation, um, sometimes they they um, they spasm and they're not working the way they, they're supposed to. Sometimes it takes them 12, 24 months for them to come back. So some guys want or have injection, want to have erections immediately after the prostatectomy, we could give them injections. The hope is for those guys over the course of those 12 to 24 months, once those nerves come back to life, their necessity on or their dependence on the injections could um stop so therefore they're able to come off the injections um that's a, a, a scenario which guys are able to come off but if you're on injection therapy for uh organic impotence or organic erectile dysfunction once you're on it you're uh more than likely you're committed you're committed to that cause going forward okay after no use of my penis for over six years, can my erections be brought back to life now? I have a new partner and we want to have sex. Is it after, what was the first part? After no use? Yeah, so after no use for over six years, so after no erections for over six years. He wants so he to wants to, Yep, he wants to know if he can uh, be brought back to life. <laughs> yeah, so the penis, the penis is um, the expression like, um, if you don't use it, if, I believe in the, you know the expression that if you don't use it, you lose it, right? With the penis. So if you're not getting good erections, what happens is over time that penis it becomes fibrotic, or portions of it become fibrotic, like we spoke about earlier. When you're not getting that good stretch, that good blood oxygenation to it, um, that tissue could um, degrade a little bit. Now, what does that mean? 
the penis is it's going to shrink in size and in girth as a result of that. So it's not to say that you can't have erections after six years, but you know it may be uh, your erections are going to be a little bit smaller in terms of girth and length. Maybe, maybe this is not always for everybody. I hope not, um, but it is known phenomenon. We do see that, um, and um, sometimes there's things we can do to prevent that from happening, or, or you know, kind of reverse it. Vacuum erection device being one of them could help stretch it out potentially. But um, uh, the injections are great because it's going to maintain good blood for the penis, and it should. The injections should prevent worsening of that penile fibrosis because again, once you're get, getting good blood flow, that tissue doesn't degrade um, the way it would when you're not getting good blood flow. All right, next question here. I'm paraplegic. Will an injection give me an erection? Yeah, it should. It should, yeah. Um, it should be able to give you uh, an erection. Um, it depends what uh, your paraplegic, and it depends what level you're at. Um, but yeah, what I would I, I would seek, uh, if, if, if that's what you're interested in, um, definitely seek consultation. Um, because there are some options for you. All right. Uh, is the injection procedure for men who are not circumcised any different? No. Um, because, so when it comes to circumcised, back to the penis here, so the circumcision, the, the, the sleeve, this, the foreskin sleeve is really at the mid shaft, even closer to the glands, closer to the penis. But, Generally, it's it, it's a sleeve that goes that starts really at the mid glands. All the injections that we're doing, we're doing at the base, so it doesn't have any impact. Circumcised, no non-circumcised, you could use this uh, injection there, be fine. It's not a problem. All right, next question here: VED therapy versus injection therapy. Which one of these two therapies offers less side effects, and which is more effective? The injection therapy is definitely more effective. VED. Um, BD efficacy is, uh, it's not great. Um, just cause you're, you're reliant on mechanical, uh, mechanical, mechanically pulling blood into the penis and then usually a penile ring to keep it in. And, um, no matter how strong that penile ring, you really can't, it's very difficult to compress and maintain, uh, compress those veins and prevent blood flow from coming out. So, um, uh, I would recommend uh, injection therapy. If you're deciding between those two, injection therapy is the way to go. All right. Uh, I have experienced the needle bending upon injecting. What should I do when this happens? Interesting. A um, couple reasons that could happen is if you're coming in at an angle, that could that could increase the force and, and create that bend. But it, the best thing to do is really come in at 90 degrees. That should minimize, really coming in at 90 degrees should minimize that, that angular uh, uh, effect. It should keep, you know, it should maintain that, that needle strength. Obviously the needle's insulin strength so it's small, um, but coming in directly at 90 degrees should really help to, to prevent that. If you continue to experience that, sometimes what's happening is you're getting a fibrosis, that area, if you're doing it for long periods of time, that area is becoming fibrotic and uh, it's harder to inject. So that may be creating a little bit of strain on the needle. So what I would say is potentially what you could do is you could move up a little bit or move down from that typical site, move closer to the base or slightly higher than your typical injection site to see if that uh, you could find some soft erectile tissue there for you to inject into. Right, uh, next question here. I have a big belly. Do you have any tips on how to inject when you have a big belly and visibility is limited? Yeah, so um, I have a lot of patients who are like this um, and you know, some of them are able to figure it out in terms of, um, as long as you're able to see the penis, you can do it. But most of the time they have their partners do it for them. And um, once you have a good, honest conversation with your partner about it, um, it uh, it becomes a much easier and much uh, kind of a teamwork situation. So a lot of them have their partners inject for them. But really the key is if you're able to see your penis, you're in business. If not, um, getting the getting the support of um, uh, your partner is uh, very beneficial for that. All right, uh, we got a 
few more questions. We've got time for a few more questions here, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, I heard a lot about sound wave therapy, like Gaines wave. Does that work? And if so, does it work with this injection? Yeah, so it works with anything. If you're on oral therapies, if you're on injection therapies, um, um, it's, it doesn't matter what you're on. The sound wave therapy, what it is, is it's a form of, it's our only form right now of reversible therapy where it could potentially reverse erectile dysfunction. Now, what does it do? It, um, it's, a, it's essentially high, high energy sound waves that stimulate the erectile tissue to increase we call it angiogenesis to increase more blood vessel growth. So what's an erection? It's more blood vessels. So by having more blood vessels, you're able to have stronger erections. Um, it's a newer technology. We're learning. We're still learning about it. Um, if you asked me a year ago, I would have said anecdotally, patients love it. Now we have good data, good science to support it, that it actually works. It works well. There's good science saying hey, this actually works. They have animal studies that they've took in rat uh, biopsies, rat penile biopsies. Um, and they've seen that uh, it's reversed the signs of erectile dysfunction. Humans, we can't necessarily do penile biopsies, um, but um, uh, there's good clinical data to support its use. Uh, patients like it, so yes, um, it's a good it's a good form of therapy. Whether you're doing it with oral therapies, injection therapies, doesn't matter. You could use it in conjunction with any of those. All right, I have essential trimmer. Trimmers, uh, my wife can't stand needles. Any suggestions on alternate ways to inject? Yeah, um, you know, there's different things. Um, like the inject ease is one thing that could potentially help you. I understand that this, this could make it easier to at least inject once you get, uh, once you localize the penis and get the needle and get the device onto the penis. Um, but it depends on how bad the tremor is. If you're um, if you're able to get it close or, or near close to or at least localize it to the one to three, nine to eleven portions of the penis, I would use something like this. Um, otherwise, um, a discussion with your wife, potentially uh, having her having somebody see or having somebody teach you how to do it in front of her, um, then having her do it under the the, the guidance of some kind of uh, an educated or a, um, whether it's a urologist who's, who's teaching you, having, essentially teaching her how to do it could uh, reduce the taboo associated with it from her end. But um, there are some options. I would say this, this and uh, appropriate teaching with your partner are probably the best. All right, we had someone who commented and said the injectees is great. So we've got two supporters on that one. Yeah, the injectees were um, <laughs> Yes, it does. Um, let's see. Uh, I used to take Cialis five milligrams daily, which helped my prostatism as well as ED. Is it wrong to continue with Cialis if I use injections? No, no, it's fine. So, so the I, I was going to say this during the Viagra question. So, Cialis, unlike Viagra, so Cialis actually has two indications. Number one is erectile dysfunction, but also it's used for BPH at low doses. There is some efficacy in terms of opening up that prostate to allow for good blood flow. So a good urinary flow, excuse me. So um, if you are on Cialis and you're noticing the benefits primarily from a urinary standpoint or prostate standpoint, uh, it's okay to use it while uh, while you're using the injection therapy for the for the erection. So yeah, no problem at all. No problem at all. All right. Uh, last question here. Do men need to have a strong libido and a minimum testosterone level for injection therapy to establish an erection? Um, yes, you have to have. So this is an interesting question. So, you know, my testosterone requirement is different than yours. And it's, again, it's different than the guy, you know, an NFL player, for example. Now, um, is there to say, hey, listen, you need 200, 200 points of testosterone in order for this to work for you? Um, no, it, there's no way of saying because, uh, you know, again, our biologies are all different. However, I will say if your testosterone is low and the the injection therapy is, is not working perfectly, I would say let's increase your testosterone levels, right? Especially if you're having symptoms of low testosterone. If your testosterone is 200 and you're complaining of low libido, erectile dysfunction, fatigue, not exercising the way you used to, you're tired all the time. I'd say, hey, listen, let's fix your T, then let's see how you do on the injection therapy. If, um, if that works, great. Um, 
But, uh, and if it doesn't, if it doesn't, then what we could do is increase the, the injection therapy dosage or concentration. But uh, testosterone is a big component of erectile function. So normalizing those levels is important, absolutely. All right, and with that, uh, we will go ahead and wrap up the event. So I would like to thank you, uh, Dr. Hummond, for taking the time to present today. We'd also like to thank everyone listening in for attending this MinMD Real Talk webinar. We hope it was informative and you'll join us again in the future. If you'd like to learn more about injection therapy, you have, there are also more resources in the Resource Center on MinMD.com. Visit this page to view instructional videos, guides, expert articles, and much more. Um, you can also call MinMD at 857-233-5837 or log in to the Password Protected Secure MinMD portal to schedule an appointment with a MinMD clinical case manager. If you're interested in any of the injection accessories, uh, like the injectees, you can learn more or purchase accessories on the shop page in the MinMD portal. We'll also be sending a follow-up email with references to helpful resources and links to each after the event. Uh, so with that, I'd like to thank everyone again for attending today's webinar, and we will see you at the next one. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, all.